Hey what's going on guys, Dano from ModBot here and it's been a few weeks since I got the AlphaWise W10 in and I think it's time to update you guys because I've gotten so many questions and I've done so much with this machine since then. So let's get into it. So the purpose of this video is two part, one to show you guys that I have been incredibly busy and to update you guys on uh, how the slicing of my own files has gone, how third party resins have been working out and kind of currently my workflow. So the first half of this video is gonna be me just showing the various prints that I've done up until this point and then about halfway through the video, it'll cut into my current workflow, how I'm slicing models and creating support. So if that's what you're interested in, then go ahead and just jump to that point of the video and for everybody else that wants to see what's been printing let's take a look so this first model of this little medieval castle was printed in their natural um, or tan what they call it resin that came with the machine it was the first model i had sliced on my own and it turned out really good with the exception of there needing to have been supports which there was none so that caused some issues after that i printed this joker from wexter which didn't require supports so it was a much more successful print it actually turned out flawless and um, I was really blown away because there was just, I mean, no layer lines or anything, and it looked so incredible. Uh, after that, naturally, I had to get into some tabletop minis, and so I found this little goblin that I thought looked super cool, but I printed him out much smaller than I thought that I had, and when I was trying to remove the supports from his left arm, I snapped his arm off completely. <laughs> so I went ahead and scaled him up a bit, hit print again, and as you can see here, this is the final version where he's got both arms, his dagger is there, and yeah, this was, this was an awesome print. Uh, it was really cool to see such detail. Uh, I followed that up with a print of Link from my good friend Jim. He's a huge Zelda fan, and so uh, I knew that he's he's been pretty much along for the ride of all my 3D printer stuff, and I lived with him for a couple of years, so I was like, I gotta get him a resin print of this uh, Legend of Zelda or, or Link uh, model that I found on my mini factory. So after that, I hopped on Amazon. I ordered some overnight resin from Eligu, or Eligu, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I got gray resin and translucent red. And so this was my first attempt at slicing uh, a third party resin. And I didn't know where to begin. So I used the default settings for the tan or for the resin that came with the machine. And it turned out damn good. Um, there were some supports in places there shouldn't have been. And as you can see, the left side of his chest kind of, I clipped out when removing some of the supports. But overall, it was just, I was so stoked that I was able to use a third-party resin, and it turned out so damn good. Um, so I also picked up a translucent red, which is what this is, which I think is a very beautiful resin. Um, it's got almost like an orangey tone to it, and then where it's thinner, it's got a frost or a clear. Uh, but one thing I'm starting to realize, at least it seems to be a... A reoccurring thing and it took me a few prints to realize this is that it seems that translucent resins require higher burn-in times as well as layer curing times and uh, I mean I guess that makes sense since the light I'm sure some of it is not it's not quite as directed because it's able to pierce through a bit since it's got that translucency while you know with the gray or the tans uh, or, or really any opaque colors uh, it's gonna grab onto the light and not let any pass through so uh, I did learn that and I've done some prints after uh, I recorded this video that are now, um, you know, better, but the models turned out great. The issues were really with the bases on them or the support. So, yeah, I did the Destiny one as well, uh, Cage 6, and then followed it up with a little astronaut Phil uh, from Matter Hacker's mascot, which I don't know why there was some white. Uh, I think that might be from the IPA. It seemed it definitely causes a little bit of fogginess, the IPA, once you um, rinse it and then have the part cured. So I then went ahead and printed out this guy, which is the War Wizard, a totally bitchin' model from, uh, actually it was from hum Humble Bundle, I was doing a bundle with a bunch of different tabletop characters and um, little like uh, terrain. And so I picked that up for 15 bucks, which is like the highest, you know, purchase level you could get. And it came with a ton of models that I started printing out. but. The details on this are just absolutely insane. Uh, I love it. This is another one. Uh, the werewolf, it just turned out crazy. It didn't need too many supports and they removed very easily. And I was just blown away. I mean, even the little bit of uh, like teeth and fangs in his mouth uh, came out really well. And at this point, I started playing around with hollowing out my models as well, which I've gotten a lot better at also since this video, but I at least learned a lot. And, um, Again, I did a lot of research, but still, with anything new, it does take some trial and error, and I certainly, uh, you know, had to 
kind of have a little bit of uh, failures along my way to get to kind of where I'm at now. And it's only been a couple of weeks, but I feel, again, a lot more uh, competent and knowing than beforehand. So, again, a couple more minis. These were part of like a uh, angry mushroom pack or something like that. So there was a bunch of these angry fungus, which were super cool looking models as well. So let's now talk about my current workflow. So I'm using two pieces of software. Uh, I'm using AlphaWise W10 because that's what comes with the machine and that's what you have to use. Uh, at least it seems like you have to use to be able to slice your models, which is no biggie. And I'm also using Azura 3D, which is actually Piopoli's branded uh, slicer or, or um, yeah, Piopoli's branded slicer, which is the creator of the Moai, a very awesome SLA printer. And so what I do is I import the STL into Azura 3D and then I pretty much do everything in here with the model. So first thing I do is I orientate it in a way that makes sense for printing. So for a lot of these minis, I turn them on their sides and then I tilt them back depending on how big the uh, size is. And a lot of the reasons why I tilt them back like this is so that way the supports are easier to remove. Um, if you have it standing straight up, then it's much more difficult to get rid of the support. So um, that seems to be the best way to do it is kind of tilted at a 45 degree angle backwards. I'm sure various models, you'll, might not, you might have to change it up a bit, but that's pretty much what's worked for me. I then go ahead and hollow out my models in this particular harpy. Uh, there's not much to hollow out except for the stone that it's uh, sitting on because of how thin everything is. So I've been using about a three millimeter hole size to hollow out my model and I at least place one on the base for kind of like an air breathing hole and one on the top or, or the other side again for the resin to kind of leak out. And from all the research I did, it seems like two holes uh, per hollow is the answer, at least two holes per hollow, one on each side, uh, because otherwise it seems that resin kind of gets trapped inside of there. And so far this has been working out really well. Uh, for support generation, I pretty much just hit the auto generate function and for the most part I've been sticking with that. I did increase the base layers a little bit because I noticed I was having an easier time removing the uh, prints from the build plate if I had a little bit thicker base. And the one thing I really like about this uh, slicer is that the corners kind of tilt up at again another 45 degree angle making it super easy to get your spatula in and underneath to pop your print off when it's done. So. There's been a couple of situations where I've had the default slicing um, create some extra supports that I don't think were needed. And as I've gotten, uh, again, more and more uh, time under this under my belt with this machine, uh, I've been able to kind of see what I think I do and don't need. And so you can go ahead and very easily remove any of the supports that were auto-generated. And you can also do the opposite, where if you think, hey, I should probably have a support here, there's a add button which will allow you to do the same thing. Uh, you just click on the model and it will create a, another little stem which is awesome. And um, yeah, it's been working out really, really well for me. I've been super happy. Um, I think I show you guys at this point the uh, addition. Yeah, so I go ahead and add the little bar here. Uh, again, I was still kind of played safe and I have probably been adding more supports than are required, but for me, it's like one with the time involved with the resin printing and also the cost of the resin, which hasn't been terrible, but still I don't want to burn through resin. Um, I'd rather have more supports than, you know, failed prints. So uh, once it's done with the supports and the hollowing, I save it and then I import it into AlphaWise's W10 uh, slicing software. I pretty much skip through all the tabs though, since it's already orientated where I want it. I just drag it to the center of the plate, uh, kind of using my eyeballs to just position it uh, to what I think is the center. Then you don't need to do anything with fixing. Typically, I haven't had to do anything. Supports, you can skip past that because you've already generated them. And so the first thing you're gonna do is the slicing portion. Again, pretty much everything I've done is at 50 microns. I put no plate layers on because they're already generated from Azurus uh, 3D as well. And I hit slice. So really not much to do. It does slice very quickly, which is awesome, like incredibly quickly, even for very large prints. So um, I've been really happy with actually the slicing capability of this. Um, it's just, you know, again, lacking in the support generation, in my opinion. So the resins I've been playing around with, which this one will get a separate video of its own, is Soraya Tech, which is a 
tough resin, uh, almost similar to like a PTG. And I've got, again, that'll be a separate video of its own. But these are the Ellie Goods that I purchased, and they have been awesome. I'll link you guys in the description to both this machine as well as these resins. Um, if you're looking for a third-party resin after you run out of the stuff that this machine comes with, then I highly recommend taking a look at uh, this resin because, again, it's been awesome. So... Um, it does come with three built-in profiles. I've been using the 50 longer 3D resin 50 uh, for the gray Eligo resin, and it's worked out beautifully for me. Um, for the translucent red, I've been using the Soraya blue profile that I created myself. It's pretty much the same as the other profile with the exception of the burn-in time or curing time per layer. I bumped it up to 12 seconds per layer because I was having issues beforehand, and that seems to be working out very, very well for me. Uh, I might be able to go a little bit uh, less on that time, but uh, the first few prints I did with the uh, Soraya Blue were failed, and so I bumped it up pretty steeply until I got a result that was consistent that I was uh, really happy with. So this is the Harpy that I printed, and it turned out freaking awesome. So I'm super excited. I'm loving this machine. If you guys have been on the fence about it, I know a couple people I know purchased it. I still highly recommend it, and if you got any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a wonderful week.